currently the executive director of the Institute for Parks, People, and Biodiversity at the University of California, Berkeley. John. Good, thanks. Um, um, Russell and I have known each other a long time, um, and I want to spend a, a few minutes uh, talking about before Channel Islands. Um, so I actually knew Russell even before I worked with him in Alaska at Ramos and Elias uh, through his, uh, he was in the second class of the resource trainee program. I was in the first class, um, sort of a beginning of a change uh, to the National Park Service. And then I had the great opportunity to work with Russell and Margie uh, in Alaska. So um, I went up 94, 94, 95, something like that, uh, to, uh, to Wrangell St. Elias National Park and Preserve, largest park in the system, larger than, larger than Switzerland. Um, and <laughs> and uh, I think I had the, really the, the real dream team uh, to work with up there, with Kurt and Patty, uh, and Ross and Margie, and, and Jay Wells, and Will Tipton, and Jim Baker, and Mary Beth, and just a, an incredible team uh, out in the middle of friggin' nowhere. Um, you'd see the edge of the earth from there. Um, and uh, we really had to work together uh, in so many ways. And one little, one little war story uh, about that period. So we were, you know, we're always interested. I mean, this is a park that doesn't get much visitation. You're talking 30,000, 35,000 visitors in 13 million acres. That's, you know, that's not very many people. Um, and one day, Russell comes in and he said, there's this, uh, this mud volcano erupting uh, out on uh, the flats uh, between the Copper River and Mount Sanford. And um, we could sort of see it in the distance and it looked really cool and we didn't really know what it was and it was sort of blasting out this eruption of mud. So we had a helicopter available, so we, uh, we flew out there. <laughs> Um, and landed, and it was Russ and Margie. I think you were with us. No, you didn't go. And Paula went, my wife. Yeah. Jay. Yeah. And oh yeah, Danny uh, and Jay, right? And so we landed uh, to check this thing out, and immediately noticed all the dead birds <laughs> completely around the volcano. That it was erupting uh, gas <laughs> that probably would have killed us uh, if we had landed in a slightly different spot uh, than we did. Um, but that was Alaska, you know? <laughs> it's all part of the experience. Um, so um, unfortunately uh, for Raggles, but good for Yosemite, um, Russell was uh, was lured down uh, to become the chief of resources at Yosemite National Park, but then almost immediately wound up uh, taking on the responsibilities re for recovery after the, the flooding in the, of the Merced River in the valley. And, uh, and I'm sure Martha Lee and a few other people will, will tell those stories um, <clears throat> as well. But he did a, a really fantastic job in trying to understand how Yosemite Valley could be you know, managed in a, in a different way. It had been really, in many ways, overdeveloped, uh, and now you had the river, and you had rockfall, and you had, you know, uh, these incredible resources that really needed to be managed in a much better way. So I came back down, uh, spent a little stint at Rainier, and then wound up as the regional director uh, for the Pacific West. <clears throat> and um, I had been on the job two weeks uh, when we had a little incident down here at Channel Islands uh, that uh, I won't go into the detail unless you really want to know. Uh, but I removed the superintendent uh, in my first two weeks of the job. Um, uh, and uh, <laughs> you know, chopping your way through the wall with an axe is really not exactly uh, appropriate behavior for a superintendent. So um, the, uh, uh, I, uh, I said, this is the time we begin to change uh, the Park Service, and that we really begin to select uh, people that will be in the, in the manager's role that have a strong natural resource background, that can really bridge 
the science to management. And this was, so Russell in many ways represents the, the beginning of that transition for the National Park Service. Uh, that people that had come up through the ranks uh, with a science background but really were natural resource managers uh, to step into the management role and, uh, and take on the politics uh, and take on the challenges of basic operations. Uh, but Channel Islands was a park that needed that, uh, absolutely. Uh, it was a park that we had this opportunity to do true ecological restoration. They had this long history of ranching and it had exotic species, and, but we had these incredible uh, resources there with the island fox and other that could, really could be restored. And it was gonna take somebody that had the understanding of the science, uh, the sort of tough skin uh, to be able to handle people like Duncan Hunter and Diane Feinstein and so many others out there um, and the Vales and, and just to be able to pursue this essentially for the rest of his career. Uh, and, uh, and Russell really pulled that off. Uh, you know, and there are not many people in the Park Service that can look back on their career and really say that they were at the point of the spear on, on true restoration of a national park. Uh, and I think that that, you know, Russell, you can look back uh, on your career of an extraordinary accomplishment uh, that the, the Channel Islands uh, will never be the same uh, because of your extraordinary effort. Uh, you're working with an, an amazing team. Uh, you were able to take the science uh, and, and put it into application. And as with the many partners here, the TNC and others, uh, to really deliver uh, on this park. And so I want to thank you on behalf of the, of the National Park Service uh, and, uh, and the nation. So I have a recognition for your dedicated service on the occasion of your retirement, Russell E. Gallipo, Jr., 36 years, June 1, 2018.